Greetings, everyone. This is Jeff Wilkerson, professor of physics at Luther College, bringing you the next in our series of what to look for in the night sky. We're talking about the week of April 21 this time around. Uh, the, probably the big event of the week starts off the very first night of the week. We got the Lyric meteor shower. Not a huge meteor shower. If you've got good dark skies, uh, I'm, I don't know, maybe, maybe you'll see one every five or ten minutes. Uh, but that's not bad. Uh, if you're here in the northern hemisphere, uh, where I am, it's warming up towards spring. We've got so, some warmer evenings. Uh, you might be able to spend a couple hours out uh, right after dark. It's probably the best time to go out and do that. So spend a, a couple hours, uh, maybe 9 o'clock at night, and, and see how many meteors you can see over that time. And you should remember, a meteor shower is named for where the meteors come from. And so that means you can see the meteors way across the sky, but if you trace back their path, they will look like they've come from the constellation Lyra. Uh, the moon on that night is about one-third full and won't rise until after midnight, uh, you know, later that, later that night even than that. So uh, the moon's pretty good shape. Uh, the peak, the white reason you probably want to get out there earlier, I don't think it matters too much. It's a pretty broad peak for the Lyrids. Uh, we've talked about this many times before, where you have this tunnel, this tube of material that the Earth is passing through that gives rise to these materi th these meteors as we sweep up the debris. Uh, so, uh, But the peak will have occurred earlier in the day, for those of us here in North America. Uh, the peak will have occurred before dark, and so we'll be coming down off the, the, the main part of the peak. So you'll get fewer and fewer meteors as you as you wear on through the night, and then the moon will come up eventually. But that's we got a good moon week because it's the third full to start the week and just waning away as the week goes on. So this is good. Now let's just take a, mo a break there for a moment and think about the constellation Lyra. It rises probably about 9 p.m. So I'll, I'll look for it about 9 p.m. And it's part of the summer triangle. Vega is the bright star in, in Lyra. And it's the first one of the summer triangle stars that will appear above the horizon for me. So you look to the east, to the northeast, uh, about 8.30 to 9.30, wherever you are, local time. And you'll probably see this bright vega coming up. Uh, Lyra is a parallelogram. I didn't do a great job of drawing it there. But it's a parallelogram of stars that sits below, sort of canted that direction, uh, that sits below uh, vega. And about a third of the way between the... Um, yeah, that, that should be tipped down. This whole thing should be tipped down. Let's, let's draw that better. Uh, about a third of the way between the, the two bottom stars, the two southernmost stars in the, in the parallelogram that you have right there, about a third of the way uh, this direction, two-thirds of the way over that way, right on the line, is M57. We've talked about that before. The best example of a planetary nebula you're going to find in the northern sky uh, it, the Ring Nebula, it's called. And so you've got the Ring Nebula there. Uh, take advantage of the fact that we've got Little Moon this week to go out and enjoy that, to find that. It's a bright enough object. You could probably see it with binoculars, but it's a small enough object. You're not going to recognize it as an interesting thing with binoculars, I don't think. In fact, this is one of the few objects, uh, deep sky objects that we look at that probably is best observed with slightly higher eyepiece magnification, power in your, in your telescope. And so because it's a small enough object, you want to open it up and see the ring. It looks like a donut. It really looks uh, impressive and good when you see it in a telescope. So let's take advantage of the, of the, of the, the low moon this week and the Lyra meteor shower to go to Lyra and see what we can find out. See, see, enjoy, find the pattern of the stars and see if we can find M57, the ring nebula there. Now, the moon, while we're thinking about the moon, let's just go ahead and, and map the moon out. Uh, so on... Um, this night, uh, where it rises on the, the 21st, the 22nd, so on the morning of the 22nd, we're talking about the moon is near the two stars in the end, the back, the tail of, of, of Capricorn. And we've talked about these stars quite a bit over the years, uh, because of, because things like the moon and planets go right by them. Uh, so the moon will be about a third full and it'll sit next to Deneb al a 2.9 magnitude star, and then fainter Nashira a 3.7 magnitude star. These two dots that mark the tail of Capricorn, the goat, uh, Deneb al Gedi, the tail of the goat. And so we've got M30, a globular cluster, sits right below there. So we often talk about that when we come by here too, because you drop down from this pair uh, and you'll be able to see this globular cluster of stars, a nice impressive globular cluster. Maybe with a third full moon right there, you want to wait for a night or two uh, in order to see it, but it, you don't have to wait too long. And the third full moon isn't that bright, so you might be able to see it this night of the 22nd, the morning of the 22nd. Now, in the, uh, a couple of days later, in the morning of the 24th, in the a.m., uh, so we're talking about, uh, 
you know, an hour before sunrise, uh, we're looking at, you've got a 15% full moon, so a beautiful crescent moon, and this beautiful crescent moon is near Venus and Saturn. Uh, we're already going to be starting to get a little bit of the glow of the sunrise unless you catch it right away. Uh, so you want to catch it as soon as you can when this, this comes over the horizon. Uh, Venus will be big and bright. I watched Venus this morning, big and bright in the eastern sky in the morning. Saturn, not as bright, and that's why you want to catch it as soon as it comes over the horizon so you have a chance to see Saturn before the sunlight starts to wash it out. Now, one night later, uh, the moon will have moved. So on the morning of the 25th, the moon will have moved across to the eastern side of this pair of objects and will only be about 7 or 8% full. So you're not going to have, the sky's going to be washed out by the time you see that the next night. So the next night, your bet, the morning of the 25th, your best bet is you're really going to see a beautiful thin crescent moon. Beautiful, beautiful fit, and you'll still be able to see Venus in the morning glow, but everything else will be washed out. Uh, just for note, uh, the moon is sitting really near Neptune at that point, but it's the sky starting to get washed out by sunrise. I don't think you'll have any chance to see Neptune, uh, but the new moon is right on top of Neptune at that point. So, so it's good morning. Uh, by the end of the week, last week we said Mars is pulling away from Castor and Pollux. We've been tracking it every week, headed toward the Beehive Cluster, M44, in the heart of the constellation Cancer. By the end of the week, it will be, it'll close down to about three and a half degrees, about a third of a fist width at arm's length. And so you'll have this um, less than three and a half degrees from the Beehive Cluster. Jupiter is still up for about three and a half hours after sunset. So you'll, you'll, you'll um, be able to go out and see Jupiter bright in the west after sunset. In, it's in uh, Taurus the Bowl above the head of Orion. And it ends the week about a little over three and three quarter degrees. Uh, so a little over a third of a fist width uh, from the Crab Nebula, the, the star that exploded, the remnant of the star that exploded in the year 1054. We've seen all of this stuff. We've talked about all of this stuff because the planets are moving around these same objects. And so we make reference to them as we do that. Now, a few weeks ago, we said spring is the time. Here we are. This is the time for us to be looking for galaxies. And we picked out a couple of galaxies in Virgo a few weeks ago. And then we drifted away from that in part because the moon gets big and bright and doesn't allow us to see external galaxies. It's time for us to get back there. So uh, let's go to Leo this time. And maybe we'll stay in Leo next week and look at different galaxies. These are the most famous galaxies in Leo we're going to talk about here today. So Leo is this question mark, this backward question mark or sickle for a tail with the bright star Regulus at the base. Then you have a, uh, the head, excuse me. And then you have Dana Bola uh, is the tail star back here, the triangle tail. Shertan is that star. You drop down from Shertan, about what two thirds or three quarters of the distance down, uh, from Shertan to Dana Bola, but straight down from Shertan. Halfway between Shertan and Iota, uh, a fairly bright star, a fourth magnitude star. Uh, so you, about halfway down, you got two big bright galaxies, M65 and M66, both spiral galaxies, beautiful spiral galaxies. You can go out, you can find pictures of them all over the place. Because uh, you'll see these two galaxies together. They're only about a third of a degree, 21 arc minutes, a third of a degree apart. And so those objects sit about a third of a degree from one another. Uh, easy to see them in the same low power eye field, eyepiece in your telescope. So get your telescope, slide down this direction. You've got binoculars, you can got dark skies, uh, you, which you should have this week, and, and depending on the light pollution where you live. So the moon won't be bothering you so much. Um, and if you've got not much light pollution, you should be able to see M65 and M66 as little splotches of light in binoculars, uh, little faint patches. So your binoculars can pull these objects out uh, just about over half a degree north, 35 arc minutes north of this pair, sits another spiral galaxy, NGC 3628. And if you see it in pictures, you'll see dust light. Spiral galaxies are great. Um, because we live in one, right? Uh, spiral galaxies are great because they have a lot of free dust and gas that can form new stars. And this is where new star formation is going on in the disks of spiral galaxies. And you see a nice prominent dust lane in the pictures of NGC 3628 uh, that sits just to the north of M65 and M66. So let's take advantage of the dark skies. Let's find this galaxy trio in Leo, and then we'll move over maybe next week and find a few more galaxies over here. Maybe next week we'll just go galaxy hunting all the way around. Some easy galaxy, relatively easy galaxies to find, some trickier galaxies to find, and talk about that. And then, you know, by the end of next week, the moon will be making a comeback. So that's what we got. We got a good moon week. We got the Lyrid meteor shower. Uh, the planets are still moving around. Mars and, and, and Jupiter in the evening sky. Venus in the morning sky. Saturn starting to make an appearance. Still hard to see in the morning sky. And we've got the, the moon then as it passes by uh, Venus and Saturn in the morning sky as the moon wanes away to almost nothing. So should be a good week. Lots of lots of stuff to see 
and we hope you have a great week. And as always, everyone, thanks for watching.